and welcome to Gardening in 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys another update on my pepper plants and also my tomato plant. And I'm going to be potting these on this in this video because they're getting quite big now. They're far too big for their current pot sizes. So I'll pot them up and uh, they'll be able to grow a lot bigger because of that. So I'll start off with the two smallest. That are my, they are my, my Apache chilies. You can see them here. They're very dwarf, uh, very bushy growth. This actually at the back I think is also an Apache. Uh, the label I got it on had a very similar description to an Apache and it seemed to f match it the closest um, but I wasn't 100% sure. So I've grown these again because that one at the back was quite sickly. So these were basically replacements for it. But they're really a lot bushier than this one ever was when it was young. So I'm not entirely sure now if this is an Apache or if it's because these have been growing solely under grow lamps. And I find when I grow stuff under grow lamps things tend to be a lot shorter, a lot bushier. You get a lot more of the side branches growing out. For example, normally when I grow peppers, um, the side branches lower down don't normally start to emerge until I get the first flowers. But on this one, I've only just got the first flowers now, and the side branches have already started to get quite mature. So that's quite unusual. But you can see they're both very happy, healthy plants. They haven't had a really fast growth um, this year, but that may be because they're just so stocky, it's a bit more deceptive because they're a lot shorter. But they certainly look like they're doing it quite well. You can see they've got really healthy leaves. A lovely dark green colour and there's also quite a few flower buds coming. I'll try and give you a close up now of the, uh, the flower buds. So you can see there, there's quite a few flower buds already. So these are what I'll be cropping in the next few weeks which is quite good. But they're very small and part of that is because they're dwarf variety. The other reason is because they're in small pots. Generally with pepper plants, the bigger the pot, the bigger the plant. Um, it, it's a general rule for most plants actually, but with pepper plants even more so. If it's in a small pot, it's really going to stay small. If it's in a large pot, it's going to grow a lot bigger. Pepper plants seem to be very susceptible to the pot size. So next one here is the Piri Piri Chili. This one is a little bit different to the other two in that it's a lot stockier. The stem is really quite thick on this. It's not branching as much and um, it's less dense. You can see it's not as um, not as squat as the other ones. But this also seems to be doing quite well. I did have uh, quite a bit of issues with edema on the leaves. I'll give you a close up of that. That's normally caused from um, having too much moisture in the soil. It's probably because this is still in the original mix that I planted it in, which doesn't have any perlite to aid with the drainage or the aeration of the soil, so it can be quite wet. I've kept it a little bit on the dry side recently and it seems to have recovered a little bit. Um, I mean, I've never had edema before on, on uh, peppers. You can see there, it's a kind of rough kind of growth that you get on the leaves. I've never had that before with peppers, but I've never grown them under grow lamps, so that's possibly why. But this too also seems very healthy and happy, so I'm going to be planting that out soon into a larger pot. This here is my one of my sweet peppers. So this pepper is actually the yellow bell F1 variety. There's a picture of what it looks like when it's fully grown. So the pro what's happened with this one is that for some reason it went completely yellow. In the last update you probably saw it, it was quite healthy and green. But um, just a few days after that, in fact, the leaves suddenly went very yellow. So I wasn't sure if that was because it was finding it too bright too extreme in the um, in the little grow box that I've got. So I put it on a normal sunny windowsill. It seemed to perk up a little bit and then I put it back into the, the grow box the last week or two and it's really perked up quite nicely. There is a little bit of deformation on the leaves. That could be a calcium deficiency, I'm not too sure. But I'll give it a, um, a micronutrient feed to try and sort out that if it is a, if a nutrient deficiency. But as it's going into a new pot, it should have any, it shouldn't have any problems with uh, deficiencies soon because the new compost will have quite a lot of micronutrients and macronutrients to help out the plant. So this one's quite spindly. Um, it's not doing too well, but I'm hoping it's going to take off once it gets into new soil. It's currently in a very rich kind of peat medium. That's the original pot that I bought the plant in. So it really needs to go into some better soil, I think. So this is an F1 hybrid plant, so it should have a lot of vigour. It's not really displaying a particularly amount, large amount of vigour at the moment, but I thought it would be interesting to compare this with a, a grafted pepper. So I'll introduce you now to my grafted pepper, which is the first time I've grown grafted plants. And you can see the difference, it's a really, really healthy plant. Probably this is probably the healthiest looking pepper plant I've ever had, to be honest. Now, I wouldn't say this is a good comparison between F1 hybrids and um, a grafted pepper, because this one seemed to have some kind of problem where it got stressed and went yellow. It could have been cold stress, I'm not sure, or it could have been the too much light, as I say, from the grow lamps. So it's not a good comparison of the two. But certainly this is the healthiest of all my peppers. It's still in the original pot that it came in. As you can see, it's got its first bell pepper for me already. It's just set, set its seed not too long ago. So that's doing quite well now. You can see there, there's a lot of flower buds coming on the plant. It's branching quite nicely, so I think this is going to be a really big heavy cropper for me, hopefully. 
And the variety of this one is uh, Maccabi, or Maccabee, so to say. You can see that's what it looks like there. They're um, slightly longer, slightly larger than your average bell pepper, um, but they should hopefully give me a great, great yield. Certainly doing really well. And you can see where the graft is. It's just this section here. So you can see the top plant and the bottom plant are grafted at that point there. And that's where that swelling is between where the, where the two plants have been grafted. So I'm going to be really interested to see how well this does. As I say, you can, it's the healthiest pepper plant I've ever had. Really, really dark green leaves, especially after it's been on the grow lamps. And it's already put on some impressive growth despite having quite a small pot. So I'm quite keen to give this best chance it can have and see how big a plant I can find to grow with this. I'm hoping to get plenty of peppers. I've already counted about 20 or 30 flower buds. So if all the flower buds do turn into peppers, I'm going to have 20 or 30 peppers. I'm not sure if I'm going to get quite that many because um, some of them might fall off. Especially with these kind of these uh, sweet peppers, because the pepper is so large, the plant not, can't, can't always support every single one. Whereas with a, a chili pepper, especially the smaller ones, even though there's hundreds of flowers, chilies are so small, such as this pepper at the back here, they can handle having lots and lots of peppers on the one plant. So this pepper plant here is, as I said before, I, I reckon it's an Apache, but it never had a very clear label. It just said it was a dwarf, uh, very spicy chili. Um, but you can see it's, it's, it's suddenly started to recover quite nicely. It had a real problem where it wasn't putting on any growth. The leaves were just kind of small and a bit deformed, a bit like the growth on this part of the stem. Just very small, shrunken stems. Um, but you can see here there's some new leaves coming through. They're a lot fresher, a lot larger. And there's even a little bit of stem growth, such as this stem here. So it seems to be coming back from the brink now. Uh, what I have done is I've left one pepper to fully deform. The idea behind that is I'm going to collect the seeds from this, try and plant them. If this isn't an F1 hybrid, I can hopefully get it to grow straight uh, true from seed and I'll have a new plant that will hopefully be healthier than this one. But what I have been doing is I've been picking off a lot of the flower buds and trying to encourage it just to kind of recover. If, it, if I did allow it to flower, this would have had loads of peppers on it, but the plant would have really suffered and it wouldn't have really put on a lot of new growth. It would have had, would have had all its energy going into the peppers. So I've checked the roots uh, recently. I'm not going to pull it out now because I don't want to disturb it too much because it's still a bit poorly. But um, the roots are certainly putting on quite a bit more growth. And as I say, the stems are starting to put some growth on now. So I'm just going to continue nipping off all these tiny little uh, flower buds. And hopefully, once this is greened up and started to put on some strong growth again, I will allow it to flower and I'll hopefully get a really good heavy crop like I used to when this was the healthy plant. So finally, here I have my tomato plant. As I said before, this is just a totem variety. It's very small. Um, variety. It doesn't have a great flavour, but it's just nice because it's such a small size. I can grow it in um, in confined space in my flat quite easily. So this one's been doing quite well. Um, it was very cold stress when I first got it because it had obviously um, got had suffered on transit to the garden centre because it was very cold weather. And there's a little bit of that there. You can see those lower leaves are still a bit damaged. But the new leaves are healthy and recently I've started to feed it and it's put on a nice dark green. It was quite a pale green for a while, but it's looking quite healthy. There's a little bit of leaf curl here, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but I'm hoping once I put it into a larger pot, that should solve that issue. You can see it's in quite a small pot at the moment. This will be going into its final pot because um, it's not going to be a big tomato plant. And I've never really grown tomato plants very well inside a flat before. I can grow them fine inside of polytunnels or greenhouses. I've always had great results, but I've never had good results indoors. So I'll see how this does. But I haven't got the highest hopes for it, but I'll hopefully at least get a small crop from this. So when it comes to repotting, uh, the three chilies will be going into their final pots because the chili plants, because there's lots of small chilies and they're very spicy chilies, I don't need a lot of them. So I don't need the plants to grow too big. Also, these two Apache are dwarf varieties, so they're not going to get too large anyway. So they'll be in their final three litre pots. They won't need potting on again after that. I think for, for reference, this is a two litre pot that this one's in. So they'll probably grow a little bit bigger than that eventually. As for the other two peppers, because they're pale peppers, they need a little bit more root space. They're going into a three litre pot at the moment, but they'll probably be going into a larger pot in the future if I can find a big enough pot, and if I have a space, of course. So the compost mix I'm putting these plants into is the peat-based compost, but I've added a tiny bit of loam to this. I just find the loam holds onto the nutrients a little bit better. Also, when you come to rewatering it, um, if, it's very, if it's very dry, often the peat-based compost can struggle to re-moisten. If there's a little bit of loam-based compost or soil-based compost in there, that really seems to help with the uh, re-wetting of the compost. And I've also added perlite for extra drainage. For the tomato plant, 
um, there's not as much loam, there's more peat, and there's a lot less perlite. And the reason for that is tomato plants like it quite damp, uh, they don't need it too free draining. Whereas chili plants, on the other hand, like it a little bit on the, more on the dry side, so they're happy with, happier with drier conditions. So I'm going to check the height now, I'm going to pot this in. I will be potting it in just a little bit lower than where it is in the soil at the moment. The reason for that is up to the first set of leaves, which are the seed leaves, the plant can actually send out new roots, especially when it's in this younger stage, when it's older possibly not so much. So I'm going, to, I'm going to bury it a little bit. The tomato plant will be different. Tomato plant I'll bury quite a lot because that can root all the way up the stem. But certainly on peppers they can root up to the first leaves, which on this one for example is just up to here. So it's just a tiny bit deeper than it was originally, but not much. You can see there, got quite a good root system, plenty of roots coming out the side. Uh, it's looking quite healthy in general. Just going to tease out some of these ones at the very bottom, but generally I don't need to tease them out. Just going to situate it roughly in the middle and then fill in with compost. I'll firm it in just very gently to make sure that there's no kind of air pockets in the compost, but I don't want to push it too hard to compact the soil. And that's all I'll be doing. And there we are, that's one of the Apaches planted up. I'll just make sure it's, it's straight there. Label it. So when it comes to planting this grafted plant, I will have to be careful that I don't bury the graft. If I bury the graft, what will happen is the top plant could possibly root into the soil, and that would mean I would lose the benefits of the rootstock. I'd just be getting the normal roots from the uh, upper section of the graft. So I'm just going to bury at the same height as it has been previously. So you can see this one is quite pot bound. There's a, there's a lot of roots. So I'm just going to gently tease them out just a tiny bit. Um, but this will really, really benefit from this because you can see how uh, pot bound it is at the moment. It really needs to be repotted and when it is repotted it will do so much better and put on a huge amount more growth. So I'm just going to remove the two lowest leaves so I can bury some more of the stem. When it comes to t planting tomatoes they really benefit if you bury the stems as they send out new roots and they get a stronger root system because of that. Now, if this wasn't a dwarf variety and it was a normal size one that can grow to maybe six or seven feet, I would probably remove all the leaves off from below here and bury it a good 10 centimeters deeper. But because this is a dwarf variety and it's not gonna get huge, I don't wanna take too many leaves off and bury it too deep because then it's gonna make it even smaller than it will be already. So I'm just gonna bury it a little bit underground, but as I say, not a huge amount because it's such a dwarf variety, this one. So that's the plants all potted up now, and as you can see, they're in much larger pots, three liters, so they should do a lot better now. That's gonna give them plenty of space to grow. So what I'll expect now is I'll expect a lot more vigorous growth because they're not gonna be um, held in check by the size of the pot, at least certainly not for the next few weeks. So they're gonna put on some rapid root growth at first, which means the top growth might not change too much in the first week. But after the first week, I can expect some really rapid growth all, all over the roots and the top. And hopefully in the next update, it'll probably be about a month's time, so maybe around about June. We'll see, just depends how they're doing and if they need any more maintenance. But by then I just expect that this pepper right at the back here will be full size and almost ripe and probably ready for picking. The small Apache chilies here, as they've already got flower buds, they'll probably already have small peppers forming on them. Piri Piri and this one, they're going to be a bit further behind. The tomato as well, I don't think we'll see much on that, but we might just see the very beginnings of some flowers. But certainly this should be a lot more growth. I'm hoping that these will at least double in size in that time. And what I've got at the moment is I've got them in the grow room, um, or the grow box, should I say. And I've, I've set up so there's a very high intensity light between the hours of 11 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon to kind of simulate midday sun. And then they get a moderately bright light um, from about 7 or 8 in the morning until about 8 o'clock at night. That way they have um, the equivalent of like a morning or afternoon sun. It's still quite bright, so it's maybe not quite as strong as a full sun, 
but uh, it's still quite a bright light level. And that's just to help recreate more of the natural environment they would have, have uh, naturally outside. Also, the temperature increases a good two or three degrees when the stronger light comes on during the middle of the day. So that also helps in encourage it to uh, grow more naturally and it's cooler at night when the lights turn off. So nighttime, the temperature is probably about 19, 18 degrees. Um, when it has the less intense lights, I'm, I reckon the temperature is around 22, 23 degrees. And when I have the high intensity lights alongside the low intensity lights for the midday section, it tends to go up to about 25, 26 degrees. So that seems to be quite a good temperature at the moment. Ideally, I could go a bit higher. Um, peppers do like it quite warm. So, you know, I could go into the high 20s, maybe even the low 30s. But I'm just going to stick with those temperatures for now, see how they do. As I say, I'll give you guys an update in probably about a month's time.